I'm gonna have fun on a trip with the gals using your card. Out of the blue, I got a call from Brian. I had noticed he'd been coming home late for the past few weeks, secretly chatting on the phone with Nicole, and acting antsy around the house. Had he been plotting something like this all along? I had suspected he might have teamed up with Nicole for some kind of scheme. Good thing I was prepared. Maybe I should pretend to be surprised here. Mine? Huh? What do you mean? Explain. I already knew Brian was leaving for a trip today. Honestly, it's unbelievable. If he's trying to pull one over on me, I wish he'd plan it out better. I had been patient with everything until today. But now, I only felt the urge to get back at him. There's no way I wouldn't have a revenge plan ready. It's about time we fight back against those insufferable siblings, after all the patience we've shown. Once today is over, I reckon everything will clear up. I hope they're having fun on that trip, not realizing one of their fellow travelers is on my side. My name is Pamela Smith. I'm 33, living in a house with my husband Brian. Right after high school, I started working at my current company. After gaining some experience and being recommended by my boss, I acquired several certifications. In this company, if you have certifications and a proven track record, you're valued. I even got a position when I was about 21 and it seems I was the only one to get such a role so young. Even though it's just a lead position. I secretly aspired to reach at least the rank of a department head. After some time had passed, a few new employees joined the company, and among them was Brian. Though I'm younger than him age-wise, I'm his superior at work. I was assigned to train Brian and two others, a total of three people. Pamela, you're pretty close in age to us, right? And you're a supervisor? Seriously? Yeah, I think I'm maybe a year younger or so. I've been working here ever since I dropped out of my high school, so I've got some experience under my belt. I see that you have your career plans well laid out early on. That's impressive. He often complimented me back then. Then Brian started pursuing me. I reluctantly began dating him, but before I knew it, I had fallen for him. From there, I guess our relationship was pretty typical. We'd go out for dinner or drive around, and before long, we moved in together. After moving in, I started to notice Brian's sloppiness. I thought maybe he trusted me enough to be himself, so I tried not to mind it too much. After living together for a while, Brian proposed, and I said yes. Then we sat down to discuss our future. I'd like you to quit your job and become a stay-at-home wife. I'll work and earn money, and you can take care of the house. That's the dream. I also want kids soon and am looking forward to buying a home and our wedding. I'm thinking of wedding, home, then kids, in that order. What do you think, Pamela? You know, Brian, that plan sounds great. I don't really mind the order either. But money's a concern. Even with our savings, you know? And I don't plan on quitting my job. Even if we have kids, we can work by being flexible. I'm a bit worried about the finances if we buy a house. Yeah, I get that. But I hate that you earn more than me. Still, I want our house. I was thinking of buying one right after our wedding. That might be tough. I already earn more than you do. So, how about we manage the wedding and the house for now, and think about kids later? We can decide what to do about my job then. All right. Let's do that. Honestly, I didn't want to quit my job, but I felt like suggesting this, otherwise Brian might be demanding forever. Before our wedding, we had an engagement party with both families. Brian's sister, Nicole, was away on a trip, so I met her for the first time at the wedding. 
She entered the bride and groom's waiting room without knocking, looked me up and down, snickered, and said, So, this is who Brian chose? A bit plain compared to his past choices, huh? Oh, I'm Nicole. Your sister-in-law. I'm the type who doesn't hold back with family, so heads up. Ah, uh, I'm Pamela. Nice to meet you. Nicole flapped her hand in a wave and left the room. I was left stunned by her upfront attitude. Yes, it turns out this sister-in-law is quite the character. I later greeted my sister-in-law's husband and thought he seemed like a decent guy. The ceremony went off without a hitch, and after touring our new home, Brian and I bought the house we both liked. I thought things were gonna get busy, so I put more energy into my work. On a seemingly ordinary day off, the doorbell suddenly rang. Since I was occupied, I had Brian answer it. He came back chatting and laughing, and it turned out my sister-in-law had dropped by. Pamela, hey there! Brian's doing pretty well, huh? Owning such a big house. Good for him. After all, he's my little brother. Right? I've been working hard. Make yourself at home. Pamela, don't we have some snacks or something? My sister's here, so hurry up. I felt something was off with Brian's behavior. He started acting all high and mighty because his sister was here. And he probably told her he bought the house himself. I contributed to the down payment and am paying the mortgage, but Brian really wanted his name on the title, so I gave in. Since we were living together, I thought it didn't matter whose name was on it. But the way he explained it to his sister kind of irked me. But I decided to hold my tongue and not make a scene. Here's some snacks. Brian works really hard, you know? Why does Pamela sound so bossy? She's not the boss or anything. Well, I am Brian's supervisor at work. Oh, that's right. Did I not mention that? When I started the job, Pamela was already a manager. Since she started working right after dropping out of high school, it couldn't be helped. If it were me, I'd surpass her in no time. Wait, you dropped out of high school? You look so serious, and yet you're less accomplished than me? Is there a problem just because I dropped out of high school? No, not really. But Pamela, since you didn't graduate from high school and I'm your sister-in-law, I can ask you for anything, right? That's true. Pamela, whatever my sister says is the final word. If you refuse, I'll kick you out of the house. I struggled to understand what this sibling pair was talking about. What's the point if she can ask me for anything because I do not have a high school diploma and she's my sister-in-law? And if I don't listen, I'll be kicked out of the house? What kind of nonsense is this? Is this a joke? I gave a polite smile and quickly escaped to the kitchen. I could hear Brian's voice from the kitchen, and from what I gathered, they seemed serious about their earlier conversation. After their conversation, my sister-in-law came into the kitchen. Pamela! Hey, I've got a favor to ask. What's up? I kinda need to borrow a little money, like $5,000. Please! How is that a little money? That's a lot. What do you need it for anyway? Come on, it's just $5,000? You're a supervisor, right? You must have a good salary. Oh, right. I needed to cover the remaining renovation costs. Didn't you just brag about your new condo the other day? Huh? Did I? Anyway, just hand it over. Brian told me he'd lend it to me and said I should ask you. What? Why would he decide that without asking me? Listen, Pamela. Either give me the money, or I'll call the boss right now and tell him you want to quit. Which one do you prefer? All right, all right. Nicole, I'll lend you the money. 
but on one condition. We need to draw up a promissory note. What? Even though we're family? I want it in writing. So, when you come to get the money, make sure to bring your ID with a picture, okay? Ugh. Such a hassle. But fine, if you're gonna give me the money, I'll be over tomorrow night. And so, I decided to lend my sister-in-law the money. I had this gut feeling that getting her to sign a promissory note was essential. Even though Nicole grumbled, she did bring everything I asked for the next day. But seriously, I never knew how much Brian was spoiled by his sister until we got married. It's just ridiculous. I bet no matter what I said, it wouldn't have made a difference. Later on, I found out Nicole used the money to buy designer stuff. And once I lent her money, she kept asking for more, without any hesitation. Of course, I made her sign a note every single time. In a month, she had borrowed about $12,000 from me. Just when I thought this was becoming too much, I got called into the boss's office. Turns out, they wanted to promote me from a supervisor to a manager. I was over the moon. I couldn't wait to get home and share the good news with Brian, who had taken the day off. I'm home. Brian, guess what? Welcome back. Pamela, you seem really excited. What happened? Today my boss called me in and guess what? He asked me if I wanted to be the department manager. My goal has always been to become the head manager, so I'm super excited that I'm getting closer to it. Huh? Wait, what? Pamela, you're getting promoted? I don't get it. Did you accept the offer? Well, yeah. I've told you about my goal before, right? Hold on. You should have asked for my permission before making such a decision. What were you thinking? Plus, I've told you I wanted you to be a stay-at-home wife, haven't I? How come you're getting promoted and I'm still stuck at the same position? Doesn't that seem odd? That's not my fault. I've told you I don't want to quit my job. Why you can't get promoted is beyond me. Shortly after, Brian made a call, and I assumed it was to his older sister. Sure enough, a few minutes later, his sister arrived. Hey! I heard you stole Brian's promotion opportunity. What's the big idea? No, I didn't steal anything. At our company, promotions are based on performance. So you're saying Brian's incompetent at his job? How dare you look down on him as his wife? This is ridiculous. Let's go grab some barbecue on her dime. They rummaged through my purse and took my bank card. I tried to resist, but they were two against one and I ended up being restrained. The two of them left, laughing. Tears welled up in my eyes. I shouldn't have married such a man. It's too late for regrets. I need to find a good divorce lawyer. That night, Brian didn't come home. The next day, when I went to work, Brian had already arrived and came up to me with a smug look, saying, Yesterday was a blast. Eating on someone else's dime is the best. Thanks for the treat. When he handed me the receipt, I saw he'd been to an upscale barbecue restaurant and the bill was $1,200. There were also receipts from luxurious bars that totaled an unbelievable $6,000. I wanted to snap back, but more and more employees were coming in, so I held my tongue. On my way home, I checked how much was withdrawn from the bank and, to my shock, it was $8,000. I confronted him when I got back. Brian, what were you thinking? Taking out $8,000? Fancy barbecue and luxurious bars? It's my money, and it's what I had saved from my single days. I just got home and you're nagging me around. Money from your single days? Don't know, don't care. 
Can't do anything about it now since I've already spent it. He said that and ran into the bathroom. That's it. I'm definitely gonna divorce him. I went to see a lawyer over the weekend. Several weeks have passed since then. The preparations for the divorce are progressing steadily. Ever since that incident, Brian has been coming home late, and he leaves the house in a hurry on his days off. I was getting suspicious and thought about hiring a private investigator when I got a call from Kevin, my sister-in-law Nicole's husband. Hello. Is this Pamela's number? Yes, Kevin. It's rare to hear from you. Yeah, it's been a while. Anyway, is my wife there? Nicole? No, she's not here. I see. She's been coming home late and leaving without telling me on weekends. She said she was at Brian's place when I asked her yesterday. Oh, I see. Brian's been acting the same way. Maybe they're both going somewhere together. It's none of my business anymore, so I don't really care. Oh, and Kevin, I had something to tell you as well. Can you hear me out? None of your business anymore? What do you mean? All right, go ahead. I told him everything that happened. About the money I lent to my sister-in-law and everything else. Upon hearing this, Kevin sighed and said, Is that so? I'm sorry about my wife. To be honest, I've been at my breaking point and considered getting a divorce but I just couldn't take action. Why don't you use the evidence I've gathered, Kevin? You should divorce too. It's not fair for you to be in this situation. Let's give those siblings, who are so selfish and spend money recklessly, a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, let's work together on this. Oh, by the way, I think Nicole and the others might be planning a trip. He mentioned that she had urged him to take a long vacation and that there were travel brochures on Pamela's vanity. Curious, I decided to look inside the shelf that Brian had always told me not to touch. Sure enough, I found travel brochures and club cards. That's when it clicked for me. Kevin, I think they might really be planning a trip. I found some brochures. I've got an idea. As I explained the plan, Kevin laughed and agreed to go along with it. We decided to coordinate further via text and ended the call. I also sent him some potential evidence that could be beneficial for the divorce and meticulously planned our next steps. Two weeks later, early one morning, Brian left the house. I knew about it since Kevin had informed me the day before. A few hours later, Brian called. I'm gonna have a blast on your card with my sis and friends. He had been coming home late and sneakily making calls with Nicole. I had sensed something was off. I suspected they were up to something. Good thing I had prepared. Maybe I should act surprised. Mine? What? What do you mean? Explain. Seriously? You didn't notice? We planned this trip ages ago. Kevin was just our backup plan in case something happened. We felt you've been getting too arrogant lately and talked about teaching you a lesson. Got it now? You can't stand up to us anymore. I don't have to tolerate this any longer. I've been patient for so long, a little payback isn't too much to ask for. I don't feel anything anymore not even a shred of emotion. Brian, what did you say earlier? I told you. About your debit card, right? Huh? I have my card in my wallet though? What? What are you talking about? Because here it is, wait, what the heck is this? You just noticed? Slow on the uptake, huh? Didn't you take my old gym membership card from the fitness club I used to go to? It's the same color and same stiffness. Oh my god. It does say fitness club. But I swear, when I checked it, 
It was definitely a debit card. You sure you didn't just mix them up? Hey, I heard everything because you're on speaker. What's going on? Brian brought a fitness membership card? I'm sure I saw my debit card. Ugh. So it was a scheme by Nicole and Brian, huh? I'm so disappointed. Actually, last night, I switched the debit card with the membership card. Seems like you didn't check this morning and just went with it. What? Dude, what the heck are you playing at? No, I should be the one asking that. Brian, tough break, huh? Don't get too cocky just because you're my stepsister, got it? You'll remember this when we get back. I've got gifts waiting for both of you when you come back. You trying to bribe us? I won't accept anything but cash. Well, we'll see about that. Look forward to it. That's beside the point. What should we do now? Oh, Pamela, can you send me some money? I hung up the phone. I didn't need to hear any more. Then I got a message from Brian saying, You better send it, okay? Or, worst case scenario, we still have Kevin here, you know. I simply replied with, Is that so? And went back to sleep. I was woken up by the ring of my phone in the afternoon. Looking at the screen, there were an incredible number of missed calls and messages. First, I called my brother-in-law and then answered Brian's call. Hey, finally! Send the money ASAP! Please! It's so cold I think I'm gonna freeze! The reason they're cold is because they're in Alaska. Considering it's February, you can imagine it must be freezing. If Brian and his group are saying they're cold, seems like my plan worked. Really? You said Kevin would help, right? Or is he not there? What? Do you know something? Anyway, it's freezing, and Kevin's not here. Should I clue you in? Since you and Nicole teamed up, Kevin and I did too. Simple, right? Now do you get why I entertained you guys for so long on that first call? To buy time. And Kevin? He hopped on another plane and is coming back here. I hung up once I got word he boarded the plane. Got it? What's your deal with my husband, huh? Don't tell me. You're wrong. We teamed up to get back at you. Now, find your own way back. See you. And with that, I hung up. Kevin should be arriving here soon. I decided to call in my lawyer. We had our final meeting regarding the divorce before Brian and the others would return. Why did I gather everyone here? I was sure Brian and the group would confront me. A few hours later, as soon as Brian and his group returned, they started yelling. Pamela! Hey, what the hell? What were you thinking? Be prepared to move out, okay? Kevin's with you, isn't he? Why did you even come back first? Unbelievable. You okay with me leaving you? Apologize. Shut it. Sit down. Usually calm, Kevin's shouting stunned Brian and his companion, making them sit down right away. The lawyer promptly handed out his business cards to both of them. Both looked dumbfounded as they stared at the cards. Well, here's a gift from us. Kevin and I handed them a stack of papers. As they read through them, their faces turned pale. Wait a minute, this mentions property division. You're not saying it's about divorce, are you? It's written on mine too. It's a divorce. What did I do? Divorce has got to be a joke, right? Yeah, right. Kevin? Let's head home. I'll go first. I've been recording your daily outbursts after some time. Even the call you made from your vacation, Brian. You don't even know what you did? 
I can't continue like this with you. Hold on, are you sure? I said it, didn't I? I'm demanding half of the down payment from when we bought the house, the rest of the mortgage, and the repayment of the savings you spent from when I was single. Nicole, you spent the money you borrowed from me, and also withdrew from my savings with Brian, right? You're gonna repay that. No wait, Brian, didn't you buy this house? And I never borrowed or used any of it. That's a false accusation. Nicole, please go through everything. There's a promissory note in there for the amount you've borrowed so far. No way, I don't know anything about this. If there's no proof, I'll do this with this scrap of paper. And me too. Hand over that recorder. Brian stomped on the recorder. Nicole tore the paper into pieces and threw it away, and then the two of them looked at us with smug expressions. Look here, first of all, Brian. Even if you do that, there's still data on the computer. And Nicole, that wasn't the original document. What the hell are you two doing? Oops. Indeed, you two don't think things through. Nicole, I have a claim against you too. Spending all the savings and such. And, say hi to that guy, you got close at the bar, for me. Both of them were shamelessly crying on the spot. The amount I billed Brian was a total of $115,000. $5,000 for emotional damages, $100,000 for the down payment on the house, and $10,000 for miscellaneous expenses. In addition, there's an upcoming loan repayment of $2,000. For the bill from me to Nicole, it amounted to $31,000, $8,000 for miscellaneous expenses and $23,000 for a loan for which she signed a promissory note. As for the amount billed from Kevin to Nicole, since she had been intentionally distressing him and spending money, it came to $120,000. $30,000 for emotional damages and $90,000 for miscellaneous expenses, all without any division of assets, like condos. I thought the two of them might sue since they weren't the sharpest tools in the shed, but thanks to our attorney who wrote at the end of the paperwork, if you sue, you're gonna lose for sure. No one's gonna represent you. It'll just cost you more. Work hard on your repayments. We settled it without going to court. I grabbed my packed belongings and left the house. Somehow, the word got out at my office, and he was transferred to another branch. Only a few weeks had passed when I got a message from Brian. Pamela, I want to see you. I never thought life without you would be this lonely. Can we give it another shot? You can work as much as you want. It's not gonna happen. Goodbye. Pamela. It's Nicole. I think you should reconsider things with my brother. Why don't we live together? Maybe there's been some misunderstanding between us. I believe things will be better. Nicole, it's not gonna happen. I'm sorry. Goodbye. They begged, but I ignored them and blocked their contacts. It seems Kevin got a similar call, but turned it down and blocked them too. Some time later, when I passed by my old house in a taxi, I saw it was already up for sale. Since the repayment was done in one go and I'd blocked all communications, I have no idea how they're doing now. As for me, I moved out and bought a condo. Work's been going well, and my boss recently told me that I've been promoted to regional director a position I've always aimed for. I've also been out to eat with Kevin a few times. He's a bit older, but we click, and our conversations flow easily. Things feel just right now between us, and we think alike. Life's been good since the divorce. I'm glad I got divorced. What happened between me and Kevin after that is a story for another time.